So I am introducing my friend, Morgan Pewitt, who is a shining example in living how to, showing how to live your life um, your own way. Um, every summer she opens Mildred's Lane is where she lives and it's a huge compound to, to everyone, to the world, to artists. And she does this with grace and humor and generosity. Our children are best friends. My daughter Leila works with her and she's inspired me to cook dozens of dinners and do talks at her barn and um, participate in installations. She is my undisputed upriver North Star. And um, the gift she will be giving is how to lead by example and the importance of staying true to yourself. I give you J. Morgan Pewitt. Well, thank you, Barbara. Hello, everybody. Thank you, World Hope Forum. Uh, this is a really great honor. And I, I just hope I can uh, have something that'll fill in the spot. I'm so sorry that the video failed and I hope they're fixing that and they can come right behind me and start that over because at the same time my Zoom failed. Um, I knew Barbara long before, I'm just gonna give a few words before I start, I have a slideshow. Uh, I knew Barbara in the fashion world kind of from afar because I too had a bout with that industry for about 20 years in the 80s and 90s. Um, and I also wanna dedicate this whole project here to my family. My mother, Judy, my late father, Garnet Jr., my late sister, Lake, my next sister, Barry, and my brother, Garnet III, and all of their offspring and friends. And I, I just want to say, start that because my, it was my sister, Lake, who's now dead, used to say to me when I was young, I want to live to the quality of life we had in our childhood. And that stained me my whole life. I didn't quite understand what that was until later in life, but by golly, it inspired everything that I do. Um, now I know that might not ring true for the world, the people in the world today, because of all the abuse and the horror and the pandemic and the psychological abuse that we live in day to day, but there's always a way through it. And thank golly we got through this January with everything that was going on in America. Um, and thank everybody who helped get us here. Um, I'm talking about work styles. I'm talking about Mildred's Lane today. And I just have to give a little sidebar note to Bruce Mao, a designer who wrote decades ago something that kind of woke me up um, coming out of the fashion industry. And he was, he was writing about reclaiming the term lifestyles. And I just thought something was amiss with that term because growing up as a young artist, father of writer, mother of painter, going into art school, studying painting, sculpture, printmaking, and then ending up with a graduate degree in experimental filmmaking, winding myself up in the fashion industry for two decades, not knowing what the heck I was doing, but I was just doing everything that I learned to do in my life. And that grew into a series of storefront practices, projects that were called J. Morgan Pewitt Incorporated. But this thing Bruce Mao said, woke me out of a stupor because it's really work we do as creative practitioners. Work is our life. Therefore, we weave our lifestyle through it. And I set upon a series of projects that traveled the world in museums and art galleries. And it led me to this place back at home, hearkening on my sister's words, quality of life. So from here, I'm gonna start this slideshow. I have notes I'll look at also, but I really want 
you to just, they're, they're more, they're not in chronological order. They're more just um, a collection of images over the last two decades. So just so they can example the quality of life at Mildred's Lane. Give me a second to navigate. Okay. Still can hear me? Yes, we can hear you, Morgan. Thank you. Well, start with that quote. And just to get you where we are here, we're in Northeastern Pennsylvania, right along the upper Delaware River Valley, deep in the woods, bordering New York State one of the most cleanest and beautiful rivers in the world. Here I am, this is an ongoing collaboration and landscape that we inherited this landscape, but it's a collaboration, greater collaboration with Mark Dion, Gray Rabbit Pewitt, our son, all of our friends and colleagues, and most importantly to know throughout this lecture, this is our home, this is a home. I mean, we're all split in all directions now, of course, because we're older. My son just turning 21, but this is our home. And what's experimenting is that it's just been an experiment in living and it's co-evolved as a rigorous pedagogical strategy, a working, living, researching environment that fosters every as engagement with every aspect of life. The entire site has become a living museum. Well, not really a museum, more like a contemporary, a new contemporary art complexity. This, the place itself is inspired by a remarkable woman, the life of Mildred Steffens, who grew up and lived her entire life on this landscape during the 20th century. And much of that time alone, since then, we've learned of another family called the Lilly family, which we are now doing archaeology and historical research on. But we call her old homestead, their old homestead, the Mildred's Lane Trans Historical Society and Museum. And it's one of dozens of 19th century outbuildings, site sensitive projects, experiments, discrete landscape interventions, and public events smattered across a portion of the magical acreage here. This place is a future preserve becoming. Well, what's different is, like I say, is it's a home. It's a home where the creative practitioner, the student, the institution have all collapsed roles to seek to co-evolve through a new strategy towards an emergent curriculum and conversations amongst all our friends and colleagues who teach and administer theory and practice in institutions, the frustrations and limitations of conventional, conventional visual art pedagogical programs become apparent. There's a, an excitement in exploring what the alternatives bring that offer a new way to work, live and research. Mildred's Lane welcomes this new age of curiosity activating connections situated at the nexus of science, life experience, and of course, critical artistic practices. This unusual situation affords the opportunity for all participants to collaborate on the production of large scale, research driven art projects within a truly transdisciplinary environment. In addition to the project work, the Mildred's Lane curricula is based on experimental ways of living, working together. These are collaborations and are designed as shared experiences. They'll have transformative and lifelong effects on how we think of ourselves in the social and political sphere. The core practice 
is educational philosophy we teach here, the collective creation of new modes of being in the world. I call it a comportment as commons. This is embodied in what we call work styles. Now, work styles is a simple term, but it's any practitioner's autobiographical and exper experiential making, doing, thinking process that is interpersonal, interrelational, active system thinking, and involves a highly intuitive aestheticism, understanding how things influence each other within a whole, cyclical thinking and doing rather than linear courses and outcomes. One activates work styles by creatively engaging with the surrounding environment of things and others at all times. These relations grow out of the material complex discipline of installation art, my core practice, but remain theoretically rich and grounded in the quotidian tactics of just getting by. Adaptive reuse, reassembling, and recycling are ways to rethink what we have, and what we, what we can use from what is at hand right before us. There's an emphasis on caring for each other and the topics that drive us. Our comportment, our behaviors bring us more closely together in all areas of our lives. Being the best we can be and urging each other on all the while. So commons, as I use it, is conceptualized as being, belonging to or affecting the whole community. Comportment as commons offers, a, offers us a way to navigate the everyday experience. Comportment here means to consider our behavior as a constant negotiation, most importantly, with the environment. Things, space, human, non-human. Rethinking our involvement with all everyday habits. Fooding, shopping, making, cleaning, gaming, sleeping, housekeeping, thinking, doing. We make each, each gesture a sustainable one. This attitude entails attention to what and who is before you and who's coming behind you at all times. Rethinking generosity at all times. These turbulent multiplicities of deportment, ethics, etiquette, criticality, and above all, hospitality allow for comfort and freedom, opening up new possibilities for new types of exchange. Such work stylings have no beginning and no end. They make up our lives. The international participants of Mildred's Lane who come from all disciplines are constantly learning and sharing work styles centered on highly charged collective topics that are addressed throughout the year and the summer sessions. The topics are prompted by artist projects, discourses on expanding notions of dwelling and sustainability, transhistorical and philosophical musings. These things occur all at once. These short and dense discursive intensive, we call sessions, usually feature small groups of students from the outstanding institutions around the world, but more importantly, it's, it's them here with our co-evolving participants who are international practitioners from all over the world. Artists, the most important, most important artists of our time and their in invited friends, <clears throat> excuse me. A day, at Mildred's Lane requires negotiating a leave no trace kind of policy similar to that of the National Park Service. And while at the same time, encouraging interaction with all life. This kind of sensitivity applies not only to the landscape, but also to people, animals, buildings, objects, things. One is asked to seek new balance and re relationships through the ongoing activation of work style. Now, of course, food and dining are at the core of these exchanges. They're constantly emerging collaborations. After all, isn't food a team sport? It's a collective event. 
These food projects have been most memorable for our participants and guests. We often make meals using an algorithmic process. It feels like the These are kind of it's games safe, that we play that induce collaboration, forces participants to allow for dinner surprises. The algorithm as a term, I mean, it's a, almost a thousand years old. So it's, it's, it's easy to sort of transcribe the meaning anywhere in any aspect of your life. And it's a set of steps or instructions to create new problems. While at the same time, making a democratic arrangement of events rather than a singularly authored or predetermined outcome. Quite simply, algorithms allow for an emergent event, energetic, socially engaged event. And by creating a playful game, inventing algorithms, a guest might quietly emerge as a dish or may have indirectly informed a particular styling or arrangement of the table. And that's what we call a hoosh. Now, a hoosh is a term that comes from my old uh, Southern slang, but deep, more deeply embedded in roots in European language. Um, but hooshing here is, an, is a conceptual and aesthetic aspect of the event. And it's encompassed at the core philosophy we call work styles. Now, by hosting and supporting international cultural producers, organizing informal residencies, elaborate dinners, developing site-sensitive projects, seminars, research, think tanks, and more, we've made Mildred's Lane a significant but invisible center for these new forms of creative practice. So yeah, we welcome this new age of curiosity. Now, of course, in doing all this at home, we suddenly during a series of think tanks back in, oh gosh, 15 years ago, realized, well, our community a mile and a half from here, our gorgeous little hamlet of Narrowsburg, New York must think we're crazy up here. So we opened a studio and a storefront there. And we started doing more community-based projects and lectures there. Um, refer, retail 21st century, R21C, those kind of topics were, topics were swarming around contemporary post-recession economic strategies. That, and importantly, the changing art world dynamics and new roles for the creative practitioner as we do here. We have been exploring emerging spaces of cultural production and social practice, which most importantly include the creative and inventive domestic environment. Clothing, fooding, dwelling. It was collectively decided that Milders Lane would establish these offsite spaces. But bringing our domesticity and what we're centering around domesticity down into town and our local region. So we call this, uh, these, this storefront and project space down in Narrowsburg, our town, the Mildred complexity. Now, this positions many emergent projects by Mildred's Lane in the region and Everything that we do there is usually posted on our website or sent out as announcements. And they're pretty close to the dates. So if you follow us or sign up onto our mailing list, you can, you can understand how emergently we, we plan these things. We don't work like a normal cultural institution where we're planning these things two years out. out. And especially that's helpful during the pandemic times. But it's really about city and country potency concerning the dynamics of people and production in the spirit of exchange. And you notice I use exchange over change. We already know change has to be here, but it's exchange that we have to work on. We're trying to 
attempting to recondition consumers to retain their critical faculties when they cross the threshold of a storefront space. My experience in the fashion industry is, is like once you cross over, and this is conditioned by post Freudian tactics in the 20th century, the minute you cross over a threshold of a storefront environment, all your critical faculties are left at the door. But we can't do that anymore. We must challenge the way that we view the world, the way that we act within it. Now, projects with resident artists and complexity manifest in the project space, as well as Mildred's Lane, into installations, performances, workshops, always as community collaborations, and with particular geography to food. And in this small town, our colleagues are building renewable sociality charged with environmental activism. And I see how it works. I think that you can raise the bar in your community merely by start starting to activate social events. This whole little hamlet of Narrisburg is about the future now. 10 years ago, it was a ghost town, but this little beautiful hamlet and all of the retailers on Main Street are actively changing, exchanging with the future in mind. So here, this is the growing collective concern for the future of exchange is we are interested in alternatives to how we conceive, produce, make, and do things systemically and interpersonally while seeking a dramatic collaborative co-evolving response to economy. We're interested in new possibilities of where to situate the space of theory and action with the understanding that this occurs all at once. And maybe it's in a gallery, maybe it's in a storefront, maybe this is gonna start all over, but I'm finishing in just a minute. Maybe, uh, maybe it's in a storefront, maybe it's in a factory, or maybe it's in a domestic space. If there's anything we can take from the experience, it is love and deepened respect for our relations to the environment and to the community. So um, I have to say that, for example, a community can swarm around conditions of exchange, for instance, hydraulic gas fracturing. This highly toxic and polluting method of gas extraction affects all of us. And our communities in the upper Delaware River, River have been most threatened by these horrors. It has pulled our community apart. I watched it two decades ago start to happen. And I think it was fundamentally just the environmental atrocities in the world are the fundamental reasons why these communities are being pulled apart. And really that trickles down to economy. Um, so it's important that exchange be at the core. We all know that fracturing kills the organism, every organism it touches. It threatens all species, all. So Mildred's Lane and all this flux, being is the practice. Again, this presents a complex socially and politically charged entanglement that embodies really importantly and questions, one, our relations to the environment our relations to each other under conditions of exchange and collaboration. Systems of labor that must change. Forms of dwelling, confronting our levels of comfort. Inventive design apparatuses, helping to change the world. But most importantly, creative domesticating foundational being. Now, all of these items compose for us at Mildred's Lane an ethics of comportment. That's called work styles. Being is the practice. 
And that's very social and political, but it can be the future of exchange in the 21st century. Thank you. Now, I just wanna say, I know I have a couple more minutes. Um, that was a very brief introduction to Mildred's Lane, but I invite you all to be here either virtually or I think this summer, I think we're gonna have to be virtual, but if you can make an appointment to come. I'm working on a book about Mildred's Lane and work styles and I've got many books coming after that. So I just wanna advertise that, looking for an agent. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Barbara. Thank, Thank you, Barbara. Morgan. I think we should have the first in situ World Hope Forum USA at Mildred's Lane. I would love that. I think have we you should all have for that as soon as everybody's vaccinated or at least 70%. We can do it in the landscape. For that. I don't, I got to see how to get out of this uh, stop screen sharing.